Welcome to the Exchange Sync for Microsoft Dynamics CRM configuration demo. This demonstration will cover the basic configuration requirements of the application and go over the process of connecting the application to your Microsoft Dynamics CRM and Microsoft Exchange environments. There are six steps to the configuration wizard of Exchange Sync for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. These steps are product key validation, company and user information, CRM connectivity information, exchange connectivity information, installation summary and configuration option selection, and finally, viewing the configuration process and completing the configuration. In order to start the configuration wizard, we need to navigate to the configuration wizard shortcut located under Start, All Programs, Exchange Sync, Exchange Sync Configuration Wizard. When the configuration wizard starts, a select action window will pop up and ask for the requested action. If this is the first time running the configuration wizard, the only available option will be Create Update Default Configuration. If you have run the wizard before and already created your default configuration, you will have the options to create a new profile or edit your existing profile. Make your selection and click on the OK button to continue. If you're installing a trial version of the Exchange Sync application, the License Key page will display evaluation under the Edition dropdown, and the License Key field will be empty. You can click Next in order to continue at this point. If you're installing a licensed copy of the product, the edition will display licensed and the license key will contain the product license key as provided by the manufacturer. You will need to click validate in order for the next button to be enabled. After it is enabled, you can click on the next button to continue. You should also notice at the bottom of the window that the application can only be configured to run on a particular machine. If this is not the machine name provided in the license file, Install the application on the designated machine, or alternatively, you, you can request a license for a different machine. The customer information page is for registration purposes. The page only appears in the default configuration and not when creating additional profiles. You will notice that the company name and website URL are pre filled from the license file. The other fields, company phone number, first and last name, and email address are required before continuing to the next stage. Once all the information is complete, the next button will be enabled and you can continue to the next stage. At the top of the page, you will notice a button that says Load Saved Configuration. In case you started the registration process previously and had to stop due to some missing information or for any other reason, you can save your configuration and then, when you rerun the configuration wizard again, the information that was previously entered will be available. On the CRM connection page, you will be asked to enter your connection information to CRM. First, you will need to specify the authentication type. The authentication type can be Active Directory for on-premise deployments, Federated for on-premise or partner-hosted deployments using ADFS, or Online which uses CRM online via Office 365. The Live ID authentication is not used anymore, but available for backwards compatibility. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will use Federated to connect with the CRM 2015 environment. The CRM server service URL is the URL address of the CRM organization service. In order to retrieve that URL, Navigate to your CRM organization, go to Settings, Customizations, Developer Resources, and copy the URL address of the CRM organization service. Let's enter it now. The service endpoint is available on the page, but it is read-only, and this has not changed since CRM 2011. The first option under the Authentication section is Integrated Authentication. If you are planning on running only the Exchange Sync Windows application and not the Exchange Sync AutoSync service or Console Sync application, 
then you can use the integrated authentication option. If you're planning to run the process using the Windows service or the task scheduled, you will need to specify credentials. You will also need to specify credentials if you're using federated authentication. We will need to enter the username, password, and domain of the user that the application will use to connect to CRM. Whether you select an admin account or a regular user, make sure that the user is a member of the Exchange Sync security role. If you're using federated authentication, the domain option will not be available, but the username will either contain the domain name as part of the username or the email address of the user. Let's enter the authentication information now. When we have entered the server and authentication information, we can click on the Test Connection button. This will attempt to connect to the CRM organization service using the credentials that we have provided. If authentication is successful, the application will check if the CRM Exchange Sync solution is already installed. The minimum version of the CRM Exchange Sync application is version 4. If you do not have it installed, the Installed Solution button will be displayed. If it is already installed and a lesser version is available, an Upgrade Solution button will be displayed. Let's click on the Install Solution button to install the new solution. The solution is located in the Resources subdirectory of the Exchange Sync application. You will notice that there are three files in that directory, so select the version that is appropriate to your organization. Let's wait until the solution gets installed. Once the, is, once the solution is installed or upgraded, you can continue to the next step. If for any reason you're unable to install or upgrade the solution, save your configuration file and try to install the solution manually. All the solution files are available in the resources subdirectory of the installation directory. There you will find a version for CRM 2013, CRM 2015, or CRM 2016. If you're using CRM online, use the CRM 2015 or 2016 version based on the online version that you're using. We're now ready to click on the next button to configure the exchange information. The next step is the Exchange Configuration. On the Active Directory Exchange Configuration page, we will be entering the connection information for Microsoft Exchange. First, we must select the version of Exchange that the application will connect to. The Exchange Server Version drop-down allows you to select from Exchange 2010, Exchange 2013, Exchange 2016, and Exchange Online. For the first purpose of this demonstration, we'll be connecting to Exchange 2010. However, let's first look at the difference with selecting Exchange Online. You will notice that if I select an Exchange Online, the Exchange Server text box, the Domain Name text box, the Distribution Groups OU, and the Contacts OU are disabled. The reason for this is that this information is not required or available when connecting to Exchange Online. So the only thing that you will have to enter is your username and password, which is your Office 365 email address and Office 365 password. Let's change this back to Exchange 2010 and start entering the server and credential information. After we've entered that information, let's click on Test Connection to verify that we're able to connect with Exchange.
If the connection is successful, make a selection of what organizational unit we want to use to store the distribution groups created from the application and the mail contacts created from the application. The application does not create mailbox or mail users, so the organizational unit for those are not required. Finally, we need to specify the internet domain suffix of the organization. This is the suffix of the user's email addresses so that the application will know to differentiate between mail contacts and mail users. Once entered, click on the Validate button. The next button should now be enabled and we're able to continue and complete the configuration wizard. On the summary page, we'll see the settings that you have entered in the configuration wizard. Not all settings will be displayed on this screen, but the connection to CRM and Exchange will be shown. At the bottom of the screen, above the buttons, there are two check boxes for import application settings and import field mappings. If you're upgrading from a previous version of Exchange Sync, you can uncheck these settings unless you are given different instructions by the manufacturer. The import application settings and import field mappings tasks will only import new settings and not override existing settings. Click on the finish button to complete your configuration process. This screen will show you the progress of the configuration and update of your CRM environment. Once this has been completed, you can go ahead and close the application. At this point, you should be able to start the Exchange Sync application or set up the Auto Sync service or Console Sync schedule.